<laughs> okay. Okay. Um, this talk is called uh, NGX. It's it's about um, comparing the performance of BlazeX on different platforms. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, as Chris had mentioned, I did give a talk a uh, couple years ago on web applications, and that's uh, an area of interest to me. And as you've seen, much of this talk is again about web applications. Uh, I'm also responsible for a um, Nodex, uh, a Node CS client for basic server, and I have a, um, a, a, a GitHub workspace that. that um, repository that lets you um, use OpenShift, which I'll be mentioning again later. So what is NGX? It's a, it's a web application for comparing basic performance on different platforms. So in this talk, how I created it, how it works, and what are the results? So, basic, as I'm sure you know, is very, <coughs> very easy to install. Just need to have Java, get the zip file, and, and you're away. So it's, it's as easy as that. So, given that, um, and me being somewhat curious, I was tempted to try and install it on various machines around the house. Um, so PCs, obviously. I've got a, a Raspberry Pi. I've got, I've got a NAS, um, a network storage, and I've, I've got an Android phone and an Android tablet. So, how does the performance compare? So, um, uh, just in case you're not familiar with any of these pictures here, a very brief. Um, install instructions. If you're interested in doing it, you can contact me later. Um, so this is the NAS. And, and that's interesting for me because I've got lots of music and photos on there that's potentially a lot of metadata in XML that could be queried. So phone and tablets, um, you can't run Java directly on, on Android, but, but one way of addressing the problem is, is to use what's called Chiroot, essentially to install another operating system, possibly Debian, and then run Java and Basex on top of that. So if you look on the, um, the Android Play Store, there's a number of um, apps that, <coughs> that you can use for that. <coughs> I use one called uh, Linux Deploy. Um, but there's a number of others. So, uh, I guess you can't really talk about um, um, installing or things like that considering the cloud. So, I've just summarized <coughs> a number of the cloud options that um, I've, I've seen around my new list and whatever. So, so, <coughs> so there's, there's one on there, there's uh, Dirk has got one. Um, uh, there's also um, something that will OpenShift runs on top of Amazon Web Services, and you can of course install um, Basex onto the Amazon Web Services itself, uh, as documented there. And another um, another way of uh, configuring these these kind of um, installations. And one which probably get more popular is, is Docker, which is a kind of scripting language for cloud installations. The, the last one I've not used personally. So, coming back to <coughs> Ben Checks. So, let's try and get some numbers to uh, compare the performance on these different platforms. <coughs> And as I said, it's because it's not like the challenge of building web applications. So, how to do it? It seems quite straightforward. We just run the same queries on each platform, compare the times. Uh, which queries? 
the obvious choice is the x mark clearance. So this is a project from some time ago. And that is 20 queries and some test data and there's a C executable that you can be used to, to generate <coughs> that test data. And there's a, <coughs> a factor that you can supply to the executable to, to um, control the sign of the data. And you can find out more at the website there. So the, the queries are generally very simple, this, this is one of them. Um, the only thing I've changed from the original is, is, is to specify the data source at the top there as a, as a collection. And we'll see what that is later. So this, this is what the, um, the XML data looks like. It's got a, I believe the text comes from Shakespeare or something. There's, there's a lot of words in there and a fair bit of structure. So the, the factor, which controls the size, um, works like this. You can go from 0 gives you 30 kilobytes, 100 gives you something like 11 megabytes. Um, the results I'm going to use here are, are just in the 0 to 1 range, but I have tried going all the way up to 100. So rather than write something, I, I did look to see if there was anything out there that <coughs> something similar, and I, I found this, which is it's very nice. It's, um, it's a shell script. It's designed for testing different um, XOPEX query engines. Um, it's got this nice feature of if a query takes too long, it, it will kill it. Um, some of, some of the, the XMARC queries take a lot longer than others. Um, but what I didn't like about this was that it, it's Unix only, but it's not much of an issue, but it's always messy to support Windows and Unix at the same time. And it gives you the numbers as, as a tag values, but it doesn't go any further than that. So there's, there's no sense of viewing or managing or comparing. So, then checks. And we're at the So this, this is what it looks like. The front page. So it's got this three kind of main ideas a, a set of suites, a library of results, and a set of environments. So the suites are, are is, is just a folder containing a lot of X query files. So at the bottom there you've got the, the X query, the train, the X mark results. So it's my queries. Um, I've also got two other samples, one of which has just got two queries, that's sample one at the top there, and the XMAR Polo, which is the XMAR queries with a couple of the um, first ones removed. Just to, so uh, make it easier. So the results currently can be presented like this as a kind of table. Each, each result has a um, title of the suite, uh, what version of BaseX it was running against, what version of Java the operating system was, so on. As you can see, I've used a number of um, uh, BaseX 8 beaters. Seems to come out every, every two minutes. So the, the environments is, is just to try and take from the set of results the um, the fact is that the operating system and the version of Java and, and BaseX, so you can look at those separately. So this, this is um, how the results look from a run from that, um, uh, using that sample one data set. It's just got the two queries, uh, Q20 and XQ20. And on the top they're running different, different uh, file sizes and uh, database sizes. Well, one of the things I was interested in is, is the difference between running and queries against files and databases. Um, so if we, if we look at the, uh, another way of, of presenting the results we're doing here is, is as a, a graph. 
Um, so here you can see the same data, and you can see the first set of numbers are all with the disk, that's why it's in the database uh, for different sizes, and then that much larger bunch is using the um, file, file system. As you see, very small sizes, they're much the same, but the file system gets a lot slower very quickly. So, so that's the reason I, I use this syntax uh, collection to, to specify the data source. Uh, the way BaseX works is if, if, if there is a database with this name, it will use that, otherwise it will look for the file. And using collection means I could, in principle, use a single file or a whole set of files. So, so, so um, it, within Bates, Checks, the results are classified often with this D or F in those ways of file and the factor used for uh, generating a sample data set. And uh, below is a, is a sample uh, query, is a sample command line used to generate some of this data. So the application. <coughs> uses two databases, one called BenchX, which holds the results. Now this, this is correct. When the application first starts, it doesn't exist, this is created. Uh, the results, such that we saw on those earlier slides, are documents within this database. The other database, BenchXDB, holds, is, um, holds the, um, <coughs> the X mark data source in the case where you're querying against the database. So as both of these are, are created by the application, uh, that simplifies installation in that you don't have to concern yourself with, um, with having a separate scripting step to, to create them. So just, just to see how it looks, this, this is um, the uh, DBIE application, and this is the most of these uh, in the form of library there are the results. So the, the each result is stored in a document, and that document has got a structure that looks a bit like this. It's got a um, unique ID, you can see at the top there, generated GUID. Got um, the suite, a bit of metadata about when it was run. The environment, the version of Java, version of BaseX, information about the memory available. Then uh, we have um, information about the runs, arbitrary number of runs, and then each run has got the name of the query and the whether it's a database or file and the size of the factor. The, the syntax here, you can see that um, well, this typing was an array and that makes it very JSON friendly. So. so a little bit about the project structure. So uh, this is the structure that I've used for a lot of my projects. So I find it very really useful. It's just just dividing the source into two halves, one the static half, which is um, CSS, uh, HTML, uh, JavaScript, the other is, is all the REST XQ stuff. And that means you can just deploy via copy. So this is using um, WinSCP, I think, to um, deploy from my local disk to to open shift, this could be scripted, but it's just a question of um, doing a simple upload to install. So a little bit about the um, client architecture. It uh, uses Angular, uh, it's a single page application. Um, here you can see the various endpoints. In general, the um, the, the client 
makes a request to the to BaseX and gets a JSON response back. Um, I, I uh, some applications might like do a uh, take take one in, in being self-contained or whatever, but I'm, I'm really happy to slap on huge numbers of JavaScript libraries, and these are these are some of the ones I'm using here. So looks like the server architecture is, is REST XQ, uh, using evil again, uh, using that timeout, uh, and we're using prop execute to generate our test data. One, one issue I found is that um, with, with um, REST XQ and well, with, with the basic implementation of the whole thing works is, is that you, if you fire up from a client a long running query, it will get timed out somewhere along the path. Um, so the, the solution I've chosen for that is, is the client, rather than running everything once, creates a whole set of tasks and it, and it sends each of those to the server and when it gets a response it does the next one. So this is the, um, the screen that's used to uh, to uh, set up a run. You can choose a, an initial state by the database, an initial size. Then you can choose to run the other mode. And you can choose to use these increments. Uh, so it will run perhaps the file size zero, then the database size zero, then increment the factor by that amount until it reaches the maximum, and then you can run that whole sequence a certain number of times. So hopefully I can demo that. So, so this is <coughs> this is it running on my local machine here. Let me look at the, the suites. So we look at song one. Uh, so it's just got the two the two queries. Um, and what the, this, this is from the um, this query 20 is from the X mark suite and um, X query 20 is just an example that's on the wiki of, of um, using the X query 3 facilities to rewrite that, that first query. So if we want to run that, run action. So just for this demo, I'm going to run starting with zero, file a database, and just increment the factor once. So if I press run, so if you look at the top right hand side of the screen, you can see it's showing the number of tasks left to run. And this is, it tells you then what it's starting. So it's, it's running through the, the um, <coughs> database steps there. Um, as I said before, one of the things you expect to see um, 
is that using the database is much better than the file system, otherwise there wouldn't be much point having a, a database. Um, the, the, this shows the, the just, just running a database uh, using a number of different factors. Uh, this shows how the different queries in the XMARC uh, set uh, vary the performance as you increase the file size. So you can see the ones in the middle tend to get slower. The ones I've removed get very much slower. Uh, the, the way this suite is, is currently set up, it, anything that takes longer than 10 seconds, or, or 10 seconds is the maximum that's allowed for any particular mm -hmm. run, and you can see that some of them are just about hitting it here. So, let's come back to um, where I started. Uh, comparing those different machines, they, they, they are, um, I'm not a great statistician, and, and these, these results are somewhat to do with more, uh, more results and more that, but um, I, I think they, they, they reasonably reflect my experience. So, the, um, these are expressed in terms of queries per second. Um, so, the ones on the, on the far uh, far right there are, are from um, a couple of PCs. Uh, these are all just running the first query with a factor of uh, one. Um, and it's only for about seven, seven queries a second. The um, next fastest is, is the tablet, which really does quite well. The, uh, the NAS does quite reasonably. The phone is, is, is yeah, it's doing uh, almost two queries a second on this is on a uh, 100 megabyte database. Uh, but OpenShift um, is, is doing really, it's really very slow, really. and um, uh, possibly that's because it's free, possibly uh, it's true that none, none of these examples have, have, or environments have had any optimization. So I'm sure that the performance could be improved on all of them. <laughs> so um, this is just a, if you're interested in this subject, there's a number of um, papers that, um, that I found while, while looking at this. Uh, this uh, member one is, is quite interesting because it describes a, a very similar system, but I don't think the code is available for that. <coughs> so this this source is um, is on GitHub, and uh, if, if you're interested and want to contribute, then um, uh, results for different environments or new suites or, or fixes and improvements are all welcome. So um, future work. Um, the code, particularly the JavaScript, could do with a bit of your uh, cleaning up. Um, the, these results are all with a maximum factor of one um, uh, because with, when you go above one, you then have to, to create the database, you have to import that file into BaseX and, and it usually runs out of memory. But, but um, uh, as you saw on the slide that showed the command line, it, it is possible to, to get X and or Gen to generate a, a group of files uh, in, in little slices, and that's something I've had to do. And, and that's, I've done that, it's not released, but, but uh, using that I've been able to go up to uh, that 100, 100 megabyte number. Um, so Christian uh, made this comment about benchmarking on the, the mailing list. Or so back. Um, and, and, and it's interesting to see how this uh, system fits his results. I, 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 if you want to create, it's very easy to create a new suite, so you can pull out real life queries, you can compare the measurements. Um, where it lacks is, is that it, it's always using the, the, the XMARC source. So if there was a way to create a clonable data source, I think that would. Um, uh, satisfy those three uh, 
purely you know, dissolvable finches. Okay, that's uh, that's it. Thank you. Um, any questions? And one thing I should say is, is that um, this uh, um, this, is, this is available on. Um, here it is running on on um, OpenShift, um, and you're welcome to to play with it there. Um, I was like to say about it, it does require uh, internet access for, as it, for the JavaScript libraries. Uh, the other thing to say is that um, it's really just designed for one person to use at a time, because if, if several people are trying to run the benchmarks, which theoretically you could do on here, because there's no um, some kind of login or security, then it, it, it's likely to get somewhat confused. Uh, but those queries show very clearly as you, as you increase the um, size that some of them perform almost uh, constant performance and, and some get um, mm. very slow up right now. But I'm, I'm sure once they get slow up or, or reducing up time. <coughs> but uh, 100 megabytes. Um, so, uh, so. situation that in fact I do not want to persistently store the, the data that just uses, let's say I possess them a couple of times. So uh, there was a certain point when, it, when it, uh, it's worthwhile really to put it for a while into the database because then my query is, is uh, faster. Uh, um, so I, I think it would be interesting in uh, analyzing in more detail the relationship between query, time, query times in file, in database, and of course also take into account the time it costs to put it into the database. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yes, yes, I, 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 I think that is interesting, but, but, but I think it is the case that, that for everything except very small sizes, then um, you're better off. You're better off, that's obvious, but uh, I just imagine it might might be interesting to study in more detail. Mm -hmm. I think your tool would um, give us very good equipment for, for doing this research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you.